Hi everyone! I am back with this mold that I got from Hobby Lobby and I believe I got this in the soap mold section and if you can see there's a um, little beehive pattern back here and what I'm gonna do is we are not gonna fill this up this is probably a good couple of inches deep um, but what I'd like to do is just go to the top of this eventually this might take me um, several pours and I'm not going to bring you along for every last little detail of it. What I am gonna do is um, just spray a bit, just a little bit of alcohol spray in the bumblebees. Just the bees. Because for the first part of this tray, um, these are gonna all be separate. I'm gonna just work on each, each little individual area here at a time and then um, so what I would like to do, the bees have an indentation, okay? So like I was planning on doing mica powders in there, but I'm actually thinking about putting these little bumblebees in there. And these actually came from Hobby Lobby as well, and they were a lot less expensive than the, um, than stickers. What these are are envelope seals, okay? So anyway, I decided I'm going to try. They look like they'd probably fit just about right into these little B spots. But what I'm going to do first is, so I've poured, I've got the spray in there. I'm going to go ahead and pour just enough to cover the B. Okay, I think I got them all. Yep. Okay, so now I'm gonna just go ahead and take these stickers here, take my tweezers, so I can kind of try to place them where I want them here. I don't think the wing part really is gonna matter that much. It's mainly the body that I want lined up with the rest of the body. I want to take some orange and a tad bit of bronze. Mix some honey colored stuff here. Okay, I'm mixing some orange in here, my little cutoff cup. And I'm putting just this, just a bit of this bronze color. And I'm gonna add just a tad bit of this yellow. There we go. I think that's gonna be kind of our honey color there this and spray just a bit of alcohol on it. Not much. Okay, but I'm going to try to kind of hurry and just paint our, our honeycomb here. Right. Let me see here. Make sure our bees are staying in the right place. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pour just a tiny bit over the tops of these bees. Okay, there's our bees and I'm just gonna watch them to make sure they're all lined up here kind of sliding around a little bit not much it's not gonna really matter I just kind of wanted their bodies to stay where the indents were now I'm gonna wait for these to cure <clears throat> then I will actually I might let's see could still work on the honeycomb. I just can't 
turn this over and get rid of my excess mica powder like I normally would do until this is all cured so I can turn it over. Okay, I'm going to work on the sides here a little bit and kind of come up the sides of these honeycomb while I got some of this left. This color. Okay, everybody. Um, I think that that's about all that we're going to do on this today. I'm going to let this cure, let the resin inside with our bumblebees cure. And then when that's all done, then I can try to get rid of my excess mica powder that's floating around here in my honey, in my honey hives. And then in the meantime, I'm going to be trying to decide what I would like to do to kind of spruce the hives up and maybe even some of these little areas. Not quite sure yet, but something. And then, um, then also I'm going to want to do a color around these rims. But we'll figure that out and I'll be back tomorrow with our next step. See you then. Okay, everybody, we're back to work on our little bee mold here a bit. So what I'm going to do is I've got some resin poured up, um, made up here. It's getting kind of warm. I'm going to go ahead and just pour a bit of resin in the bottoms of my honeycomb. Don't think I'm going to do any color around it right now. If I was going to do that, I probably should have done that first. So I think I'll have to try to do that the next time, okay? But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and pour just a bit to cover the bottoms of these. We're going to go ahead and we're going to place a few more of these bees in some of our honeycomb. I was waiting for some of my other bees that I ordered to come and they have not come yet. So I decided I'm not going to wait any longer for them. I'm just going to go ahead and place some kind of around. Okay, so that part is done, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of drizzle a little bit of resin over the tops of these little bees. Okay, I think that's all we're gonna do for right now on this. After this part is cured, we will come back and do the next part, okay? I'll see you then. Hello everybody, okay, so I've made up some more resin here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a few of these little gold seed beads to it. And I'm also going to add just a bit of these gold glitter flakes, okay? I don't want too much in there, but just I'm going to add just a bit only about like that, okay? It's not very much. Okay, and I'm going to stir this all together. It might not be enough. If I was doing a deep, a deeper pour in each one of these, that would probably be enough glitter. But for it just being a thin, 
a little bit more here. Okay, I'm going to just start pouring gradually here. Okay, now I'm going to spray it, get alcohol going on these. Okay, so that part's done, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up more resin so that I can start filling in my um, honey-colored um, shapes, too, okay? And then I'm going to trim all of the honeycomb, and yeah, we will be doing that the next step after I get this, these filled. Okay, I'll see you then. Hello everybody. Okay, I'm back to work on this. It's pretty much cured. We've got pretty much all of our little honeycomb um, things are not completely to the very top, but pretty close. And so now I'm going to be taking my paint pen here. This is just a Craft Smart paint pen and I am going to be painting the outside of our um, of our honeycombs, okay? And then when that is done, then we will come back and pour our clear resin over the top. And then tomorrow we should be ready to demold this tray and do the next step, okay? So anyway, I'm going to just, this is a new pen. I don't know if I've used this one or not, but I'm just gonna go around the outsides here. Um, let's see, get a paper. Get this one going. I probably have a wider set one. I do. I have this bigger pin that's got a bigger tip on it, and I might use this one for the for this side. But I think I'm going to need the smaller one to do, to do these inside rims. Okay. So actually, I think while I'm just like kind of letting this stand upside down for a minute, we'll go ahead and uh, work on the inside rims here. I'm just going to start over here. And paint the paint these rims. I kind of would have liked to have had a bright a brighter yellow pen, paint pen, but I don't have one of those. So I decided to use gold. Okay, I'm going to take you off the camera stand now and bring you in and show you a little closer um, what this looks like. Okay, here is our little hive with the gold paint around the edges. And now we're ready to put a layer of clear over the top of this. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to mix up some resin and then I will be back to do the pour. Okay, so I've made up my resin and it's about ready to pour. I don't see any bubbles in there at all. I'm gonna do just a quick light mist of alcohol over the top. Not much, because I don't want it to eat away at my paint that I just did with the paint pen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start pouring, hopefully kind of evenly through all of these.
There we go. So there is the first layer. That was eight ounces. And I'm gonna go ahead and go over it with my heat gun real quick. And I'm also gonna go ahead and do one light spray of alcohol. There we go. And I'm gonna mix up another eight ounces of resin and then I'll be back. Okay, so I went ahead and I made up another eight ounces of uh, just clear resin and I went ahead and poured it. And so now everything is completely covered. I ran over it with my uh, heat gun real quick. And now I'm going to set it over on a level spot and let it cure. And I don't think I'm gonna do another layer of clear resin. I don't think, uh, I wanna make sure that I've got a pretty thick top over this. Gosh, you guys, I don't know. I might should do one more layer. It's gonna be a really heavy tray but I want it all protected in it for it to be really secure when we take this out. So, um, yeah, I think right now it's got about, maybe about an eighth of an inch of clear resin over the top of our honeycomb. Okay, I'm gonna bring you down and show you. Okay, here it is with our second layer of resin over the top. Can you see there about how much it is. Um, I don't know if you can really see it from here, but it is about about an eighth of an inch or so. All the way around. So, you know, I don't think it needs like a quarter of an inch of resin over it. I just think that might be overkill. I'm gonna do a quick spray of alcohol. I see a couple bubbles coming up over there. So, yeah. I think I'm going to just let this cure really well before we demold it. Okay, so that might be um, maybe like, I think I might wait maybe about 36 hours or so before we demold this. Um, and then I will be back then and we'll demold it together. Okay, I will see you then. Hello everybody. Okay, I'm back and I believe that all of our um, tray here is completely cured. It's been sitting for a few days, so it should be good to go. I'm excited to finally get this thing out of the mold today. So I'm not sure how easily it's going to be. It's got all these little um, parts back down in here. Um, but let's get it out of here and see how it's going to do. It's been in here for some quite some time. So all these individual little uh, little crevices and things are gonna have to come out. So it looks like, you know, this mold isn't very thick. Um, so it looks like it might take me a little bit. I might, um, I might take you off of here and get some alcohol and just kind of slowly work on this and get all of these out and then I'll be back. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I got it out of there. Um, the hardest part was around these main first edges and I did have to use a little bit of alcohol to spray, but um, my mold was pretty thin and it just kind of tore apart while I was getting it out of there. And you know, really this mold, it's big. I think I paid $6.99 for it at, I think Hobby Lobby. And um, it's made probably for baking or for little soap molds or something but um but i did get it out of there so and it came out out in one piece it is definitely a big piece it used a lot of resin and it's probably sorry for me it's probably a one-time thing but here's the back of it and here's the front of it it turned out really pretty it's pretty thick um it's a little little heavy not not too bad I'm wondering actually if if this would be really kind of almost pretty to hang. I feel like I could do a couple of um, screws here and hang it and let the light kind of let the light shine through. You know, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, originally, I made this as a tray, but it's really too thick for a tray now, and that's because I 
didn't need to add as many layers as I did, but um, but I really wanted my honeycomb to have some depth to it, and it definitely does. <laughs> definitely has a lot of depth. It's actually really pretty. I could do something back here, especially around these around these bees. I could come in with my pen that kind of would match this color. I feel like it almost looks a bit bronze. Okay, and I don't know if that's picking that up or not. It looks a bit bronze. I could take my pen and do these in bronze to kind of make it all blend together. Well, this turned out really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the top. I got a few little smudges on there from when I was trying to get this out of there. And, um, and I will let you know what I decide to do with this, okay? Thanks everybody and I will be back in a bit. Hello everybody. So what I decided to do was to get my books of cardstock out and search through um, all of the beautiful designs, trying to find a great backing for my beehive. I narrowed it down to about four different patterns and gosh, it was a hard choice because there's some really nice patterns in these books. I used my paper cutter and I measured my wooden panel and then I used my paper cutter to cut my cardstock down to size. These run about nine or ten dollars on Amazon and they are wonderful. They're really compact, they're lightweight, and um, gosh, I can't believe that I waited so long to buy one of these. They're just amazing and I work with paper a lot, so it's pretty convenient. The um, pattern that I finally decided on was this gold foil bumblebees. It um, really is pretty. The gold in the bees brings out the gold trim that we did on our hive and I just kind of fell in love with it. It was the perfect, perfect one. And now that we cut the cardstock down to size, it just lays in there perfectly. I have not glued this in yet because I plan to um, use a shadow box that actually has a plexiglass front. Um, but as you can see, the this just fits in there perfectly. It's probably about, I don't know, the beehive is probably 11 by 11 or so. Um, I haven't measured it yet, but I really think this is the perfect place for it. I thought about putting eye screws up in there in the top and hanging it um, to let the light shine through. And then I realized that it's resin and I really don't want it in a window or anything like that. So I do still want to hang it on a wall. And I think this is just going to be the perfect, um, just the perfect setting for it. Uh, the... Um, Michaels has the shadow boxes on sale right now and so the one I chose is going to be a lot like this one. Um, I believe the edges that it's already like a pretty white and then it will have a plexiglass front and I will mount the beehive in the center. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.